Welcome back guys. In today's video we're going to be doing some setting up and some basic tuning on our SU carburetors. Let's go and take a look. Are you listening? Damn. Uh. Now, before we get too deep into it and the setting up of the carbs, why are we doing what we're doing? Well, let me stop myself right there. Now, if you're watching this video because you want to learn how to set up your carbs, balance and tune them, you need to skip to 6 minutes and 9 seconds in this video. However, if you're here to watch our restoration journey, you may continue watching from here. Now we've had a few cold start issues when the car gets hot and up to temperature is running lovely, but cold starts in, it chokes, it splutters, choke on, choke off, eventually, eventually it will catch and then it kind of bogs and chokes until it gets a little bit warm and it seems to clear. It will run on easy start though, a little squirt of easy start and it runs beautifully from the cold, from the get go. So that tells me it's fueling because as you know if you saw last week's video our timing is correct and the car runs and it runs pretty nicely when it's warm. Um, so what I've done is I've taken the pistons and the suction cups off and I have found little bits of rubber in the jets themselves and I also found that one of the jets was partially sticking and the other one was sticking completely so A it was partially restricting the jet and B it was causing them to stick because that rubber was sticking as it was coming up and up and down as it should be moving freely so let's take a little head over to the bench and I'll show you what's inside the jet assembly itself I won't go too deep into setting those up because that's not what the video is about it is about setting up and some basic tuning. So we'll reassemble those, pop them in the carbs, and then we'll start with setting our float levels. Right, let's very briefly go through the issue that we've been having. This is the jet, and it's got a side drilling inside of it. Obviously fuel is fed through the side drilling and then up through the jet where the needle pulls up through, and obviously they'll move away from each other. Tapered needle, drops down, bigger gap, more fuel, richer mixture, jet goes up, smaller gap, less fuel, leaner mixture. Now, these side drillings, as I say, they were super duper sharp. So what I've done is I've just got a little Stanley blade and I've just deburred them, just nicked the little rough edges out of them and then I've just gone over them with a little bit of wet and dry and now they're super smooth. Now, this is the way that it sits this is the jet assembly and jet holder if you will and jet body that screws into the bottom of the carb with your seal and then a holder and then you've got a rubber seal and a little brass washer a spring a washer another rubber and then a holder at the top now <clears throat> what was happening is the jet was going up through here which goes through here and then it goes through one of our seals and as I said earlier, it was nicking the seals. So when it was pushed through, when it got to that stage, it was so sharp, it was nicking a bit of rubber off the outside, and that rubber was sitting in the void in between the two seals, which was A, potentially sitting in the jet and blocking the jet, and also restricting its free movement, because the seal sits either side of this hole, which makes it fuel tight, and then the jet moves up and down in these parameters like this, and allows the fuel to be forced up the middle of the jet but with those bits of rubber in there we didn't stand a bloody chance did we we had no chance so I'm gonna reassemble this with new seals I'll put those back together stick them on the car and then uh, we'll go from there now I don't want to go in dry so I'm gonna use a little bit of lubrication um, I've gone for a little bit of white lithium grease because I'm very very conscious that I do not want to block these jets but at the same time, we do need to reassemble it without the spring so that we can wind the jet all the way up to set our jet in relation to our needle. We then need to pull the jet back out, put our spring in and go again. So it's not like I can assemble it all dry and guarantee it now. I do need to assemble it, pull it back out and then go in again. So I'm going to get myself a little artist brush, a little bit of white lithium grease and just a tiny little bit inside of the new seals. And fingers crossed, that should do the trick.
got there eventually, didn't we? And just by the way, guys, I did it the wrong way around, first of all, to show you how not to do it. Don't make my mistakes. I'll make them for you. Right then. Tiny little bit of our grease. Oh, by the way, the grease helped uh, a lot. It really did help a lot. So that's all pushed up in there nicely now. Um, right, this one can now be wound into the carb itself. And then we'll see what sort of free movement we got. See how she feels. Hopefully, nice and smooth. Right, first things first, removal and safe storage of piston. A mug, it doesn't have to be Carlsberg. You can use a different type of mug. Bit of cardboard with a hole in it. Because remember guys, you've got oil inside of this piston. Well you should do. And you've also got a needle on the bottom so you want to store it that way up. So a little bit of cardboard in your cup. Oh yes. Pop it on the floor, job done. We'll go into uh, oils and what to use at the end because that's a whole different story. The internet trolls will be out to get you on that one if you put the wrong oil in your carburetor. Float chamber fuel levels. A little needle valve underneath this snake's tongue affair. And when it drops down, obviously you've got, it sits that way in the car. Float underneath and as the fuel level drops, this drops and it allows fuel in. So if you blow through here, you'll get air flowing through and if you shut it off, it will close. Now, all we need to do on these, 7 sixteenths or 11 mil drill bit, and we need to pass it through and sit it on both sides, and it needs to sit just under the snake's tongue with it just resting on the needle valve, which this one does. If for any reason it's out, you can bend it just there, up or down, so you can get it to sit right and obviously check that they open and close as they should do. So I've already done the other ones, so they can go back on the job and we can connect it all back up. Second thing to do is to centralize the jet. We need to line up and centralize the needle with the jet. So first things first, clean your piston body and also the inside of your carburetor. Piston only goes in one way and you should drop nicely down onto the bridge and then you can push the jet all the way up so that you're lining up the largest part of the needle with the top of the jet. Little bit of oil, slight bit of oil on the inside of your piston. Then your spring goes on and then your suction cup which only goes on one way. We can then fit our three screws now remember at this point, the jet locating nut is loose, which gives us the ability to have a little bit of play on the jet so we can centralize it with the needle. Nip up our three nuts and then check with our lift pin that everything is hunky-dory, which it still is. And now what we need to do, hold our piston down so it doesn't move Push the jet up so it's at the highest point with the needle and then we can start to tighten up our jet locating nut. Oops. So that one's now tightened up and with any luck if we use our lift pin, piston should lift up and then fall nice and easily back onto the bridge like so. So now the jet nut is tightened, the jet is in the right place and it's centralized with the needle. So now we can remove the jet again, put our spring on, put the jet back in very carefully not to snag our seals and we can guarantee that everything's centralized and now we can do the next one and then we can move on to the next stage. So the next thing to do is set the height of the jet. This is just a base setting to get you running. Now if I lift that piston up, hopefully you can just about see inside. And we've got the jet which is just below the bridge. The bridge is this flat land here that the piston sits onto. The way I like to do it is to put the piston, the weight of the piston on a steel rule, so that, that is flush with the bridge. 
And what we can then do is wind the jet up until it gets just up to touching the ruler. Now that is our base setting. Our jet is flush with our bridge. Now when we get to that stage on both carburetors, we then need to unwind this nut and lower the jet one and a half turns or nine flats on the hex adjuster nut. And that is the base setting for our jets set up and ready to go. The next thing to do is to disconnect all of your linkages and also the connecting piece between the two carbs so that they move independently. We now need to undo our throttle adjusting screw, which is this one here. And the same on the other side. Now the carbs are independently set up at the moment and then we can fine tune when we get the car running. So we need to undo our throttle adjusting screw. You need to look in on this sort of angle until it is just away from its stop and then you go back in one and a half turns which will just lift the butterflies evenly and that should be enough to get the car running and then we can fine tune by listening to the two carbs individually to balance them up and get our idle. So that is all of our base settings for our carb. Now we do need to put some oil in the dash pots themselves. I've done a little bit of reading online and the general consensus is SAE20. And you've got the little shoulder that the plunger sits into. And if you remove that one, I've taken the oil out of them. You can push the piston up to the top so you can see it and it's easier to get in and then you can pop some oil in up to the shoulder, lower your piston back down. Now just to get it running, I'm gonna reconnect the choke linkage so that I can pull the choke open so we can hopefully get it running. We're then gonna fire the car up, get it up to operating temperature, and then we can look to do a little bit of fine tuning. We've got two stages to it. We just pull the choke cable a second. The first bit of movement is just the fast idle. So it just pushes this bar up and it just props open the butterfly. The first little bit just does that and then it opens the jets. Now what I found was happening initially is I was pulling to here and just as the jets were about to move, it was only opening one of the jets. This front carb jet was opening fully. The back jet was staying still. So what I did is I pulled it all the way open so that only this one jet was open, slackened off the screw, and then pulled this manually open so that both jets were open equally. Because again, if we're trying to start an engine from gold and it needs choke and we're lowering that jet, then we need to lower them both evenly. Otherwise, we're gonna have an imbalance on our choke as well. So that's all set up now and we can pull our fast idle and then we open our jets evenly. So now it's time to try a cold start. So we've got choke fully open. We're not gonna use any pedal whatsoever because obviously we're disconnected on our linkage. Just check we've got no fuel leaks as well. Okay. the choke already within seconds and the idle is very very high so we need to get up to operating temperature 
and then we can start to ease our throttle adjusting screws down to achieve a nice steady warm idle and then we can have a little listen to the carbs and we can start balancing them. Right, when we fired it up initially, the left hand front carb, the piston was a lot higher. Now I'll get it back running in a second and I'll just undo that throttle adjusting screw. Now this is the key point. Carbs are currently independent. If they are linked together and you adjust one, you're adjusting both. They need to be set up independently. I'll just fire it up and then I'll adjust that I'll throttle adjusting screw in and out and you can see the height of that piston move according to airflow because obviously you're opening and closing the butterfly which is further down. We're getting up towards temperature now. Now what we're doing by adjusting that throttle screw is we are just propping the butterfly open, which allows more air to be drawn through the carb, which will raise the piston up. And if you restrict it down, it will lower the piston down. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna adjust that front carb to bring that piston down to the same height. We're then gonna keep uniformly and evenly marching the two down until we achieve a steady idle at around about 800 RPM. And what we can do is we can put a little bit of hose to our ear and we can listen to the two carbs for the same pitch in the air being drawn through. Right then, that's fully up to temperature now and we've evenly marched the two throttle screws down and had a little listen with the hose and looked at the piston heights and we've got it idling at about 900 RPM. Now we need to have a little listen to our exhaust note. Now there are three types. The two weak is an irregular note and a splashy misfire and colorless. Correct is a regular and even note and too rich is a regular or rhythmic misfire. Now then we've had a little listen and we think that we are too weak. Irregular note and splashy misfire because the miss is inconsistent. It might be this and then miss, it's not miss 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 so i would say we are too weak so we'll use that as our baseline so if we are too weak then we haven't got a big enough gap between our jet and our needle so we are going to be winding evenly the two adjuster nuts down so we'll probably go a flat at a time each and we need to keep going until we get the highest consistent idle and if we get to the point where we're adjusting and nothing's happening, then we've gone too far, we've gone too rich, and then we'll go back to the point that we get the highest consistent idle, and then we can then readjust our throttle screws and get our idle nice and low in the six to 700 RPM range, and then we can play around by lifting our lift pins and check that our revs do what they want to do, and then we should be ready to do our fast idle screw, and we should be done. Right, we were too lean and we've just backed the jets off and the revs went up and a bit more they went up, a bit more they went up and a bit more and then they steadied out. So we went back to the point that they were just dropping, back to where they were steady and the exhaust note just, it just streamlined, it just evened out. Before it was a bit put put and then put put but now it's a put put and it's very very nice. We've adjusted our two throttle screws and we've got our idle. Let me show you where. We are, we're pretty rock steady at I would call about 600 RPM. And I'm super happy with that. Let's go and have a little listen to the exhaust. Nice and even, nice and rhythmic and always round, super, super happy. The last but one, the fast idle screw, which is this one here. Now I've backed it off fully so that it wasn't interfering when we were doing our testing. Let's just zoom you out a little bit so you can see what we're trying to achieve. When we pull our 
choke on. There's an element of free play in these arms and you want to pull a little bit of tension in until it is just opening the jet. So you see our jet's open, pull it back, jet's closed and it is just about to open the jet. So at that point there, we want to start the car up when it's hot, like it is, and we need to wind that screw in or out until we get an idle of about a thousand RPM. And then that one is set and put to bed and done. Now the last, the last thing to do just to prove our mixture is to lift our lift pins, which are these two little pins here which will push the pistons up and down. It says to lift them up 0.8 millimeters, which to me seems a little bit impossible. But what you want is there's three things that will happen. The revs will increase dramatically, the revs will decrease dramatically, or the revs will just rise slightly. Now we want the revs to rise slightly. So we'll just get them fired up, get it to idle, and then we'll try those lift pins individually. And if that's all good, we're in a great place. I'd say that's having no discernible effect on idle. And I'd say that's the same. So, I'm pretty happy with that. Very happy. And we're on the nose at 600 RPM. Job done. Choke fully out, both jets open, fuel pump primed, and now it is time to see how well it starts from stone cold with our carb setting up, tuning, balancing, and our choke adjustments. Wish me luck. Now that is a hell of a lot better than what we had before we started and a hell of a lot better than what we had when we just had our base settings in there. So as you saw earlier guys, the base settings allowed us to, I thought it would have started a little bit easier, I'm not gonna lie, but it got there eventually. We then fine tuned and fettled and balanced and we've set everything up in nice logical stages and now that was a, a stone cold start and it started really, really nicely. Um, I'm super happy, we're super happy, and I hope you found it helpful and informative, because these SU carbs are on a huge range of vehicles, uh, classic cars, 50s, 60s and onwards. So it's not just an Austin Healy video, we've got single carbs, dual carbs, triple carbs, all the SUs, the principles for the H series carb are the same. So let's hope it's been useful, helpful, informative and if you enjoyed it guys give it a thumbs up and if you want to see more from us make sure you subscribe i'd like to think that next week when you see us the wheels will be on she'll be on the floor and we'll be going for a little drive fingers crossed that'll be a good episode see you later guys take care Finish this old rusty bit.